A bent lamination is a woodworking technique where you can form almost limitless curves out of thin strips of wood. You glue them together over a curved form and then when you unclamp them later once the glue is dried, it'll retain that shape. I'm going to show you how I use the technique to make a curved piece of trim that goes over top an arched window. Let's get started. The first step in a bent lamination is knowing the radius that you're going to be bending to. In my case, I already have a piece. This is the inner part of a piece of trim and I'm going to be doing a bent lamination around this. The dimension of that uh, lamination will be an inch thick by two and a half inches. So we're going to use this as a template to trace out on some plywood to make the bending form. Let's go ahead and go over and get this traced out. When you're doing your form, you can draw out your curve or whatever shape you want your bent lamination to be in any way you want. You can do uh, have a pivot point with a string and swing a big arc if you're making a bigger one using a compass or whatever you need to do. I just traced around the inner part of a trim work for the window. I cut it out using a bandsaw and then to space out both sides of the form, you'll need two of those uh, OSB side pieces. I just cut out some 2x4 pieces that I used as spacers. I then took all those little spacers and then distributed them evenly throughout the curve on one side of the form and then applied glue and then added the opposite side of the form and then used a nail gun to nail it all in place. And then if you wanted to, I'll mention that in a minute, but you could put a piece of plywood around the outside of that too to make a more even surface. So the completed form is very simple. All it consisted of was two pieces of OSB cut to the arch and then filled in with those two by four spacers. And uh, that'll give plenty of support for this bent lamination. If you wanted to make this uh, surface even smoother, you could bend a piece of thin plywood around it. You can also laminate um, a form up into out of a bunch of pieces of plywood to get a totally solid form. For my case, I'm doing these two bends, and then these things are uh, no good to me. I'll probably keep them anyway for the future. I might just um, decide to use this curve for a project, but um, I just needed something to get the job done. So the next step is to cut those strips, and those strips are going to need to end up being two and a half inches by one inch thick. So I'm going to over rip them to about two and three quarters probably and then smooth up those edges and then rip that curve to its final width after the fact because those layers will probably shift just a little bit. So let's go back into the shop, get the table saw set up and rip some one eighth of an inch strips that are long enough to go around our form. Next up is ripping the strips and I ended up ripping them slightly under an eighth of an inch. Actually pine's a little stiff so it can crack. And then on the form I put some uh, painter's tape. You can use uh, transparent tape also. Just keep you from gluing the strips down. Then you want to just put glue all over your strips. Put it on both sides to make sure you get good adhesion. And then mark the center and then clamp that to the center of your form if you're doing an arc shape. Otherwise you can just have it marked to any sort of a reference point. When it comes to clamping, you want to make sure you're getting as many clamps on there as possible um, and uh, getting even pressure. And you want to start from the middle and kind of work your way out to the outside. And uh, that'll make sure you don't end up with any bound up areas. All right, well, here's the upper part of the trim all clamped together. And you can see it's quite a bit of clamps. And it could still afford to have more clamps on it. If you're doing a piece of furniture or something, you're going to want to make sure that you have this really clamped down to avoid any gaps in the glue seam. And it looks messy now, but it'll all be cleaned up. So for example, right there, there is a gap. But in my situation, it's going to be all right because this is going to get um, smoothed out, trimmed down, uh, some wood filler, and then painted. This is just trim work. It's not a structural part of the house. So this is mainly for appearance, and um, uh, so it will be perfectly fine. But for those of you out there who are going to be doing furniture, you want to take extra care to make sure that you're getting a really tight glue seam. So I let the piece sit overnight to go ahead and let the glue set up. Depending on your conditions, temperature, humidity, and all that, you may be able to unclamp it faster, or you may have to wait a little longer. And um, as I said, I really didn't have enough clamps on this, but for what I'm doing, it will be just uh, just fine. I can uh, spackle up, fill in any gaps, wood filler and whatnot, but um, 
just go ahead and get this popped out of the form and see what it looks like. And this is the reason you want to put tape on it because it's gonna could get semi glued down. You can also use packaging tape, the sort of you know the clear plastic tape. But um, there's our piece. And so right now, of course, it looks a little bit rough. Um, but we're going to clean up those edges and then get it to its final width and smooth it all out. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So for smoothing out one of the sides of the bend, I'm going to use the joiner and then I'll take it to the table saw. Just using this little tiny joiner here. It's a four inch joiner. It's a Delta Milwaukee, a little small one. It's great. But then I um, put this little rigid flip top stand this portable work stand right beside it and that will add act as sort of an outfeed since i'm doing a curve i'm not going straight so i'll kind of come out to the side so to help me keep from tipping like this i'll use this off to the side and i just got this so this is the first time i've ever used it on anything it's mainly meant for a table saw but um or planer whatever but uh i'm going to use it here for those who don't have a joiner, you'll have to figure out how to get this done. You could uh, borrow someone's joiner, you could use a hand plane, a belt sander, or just whatever else you have. You'll have to look at what kind of tools you have and figure out what you have that could work best. And I've also gotten some questions lately about joiners, and for those of you who live in the United States, um, you could get one of the small ones from Lowe's, one of those bench top ones, I think for about two twenty five or something like that. It's a Porter Cable version, a little small six inch jointer. And to cut the opposite side of the curve to uh, parallel the sides, I'm going to use the table saw. And um, if you're not comfortable doing something like this, I wouldn't advise doing it. It is a little tricky, but it's really not that bad. Um, you could also do this just by joining the opposite side and going down to a line that you've already drawn on the uh, outside and the inside of your curve. But uh, I'm going to use a table saw. So the key with ripping curves is just taking your time. you got to really watch. Make sure it stays flush on the table against the fence. And then your lowest point you want to aim for right at the front of the blade where the curve is making contact. And... You just need to take your time once again. You could even do this with the blade not uh, raised up into place to make sure that you kind of are prepared and have your push stick close by to where you can pick that up nice and easy. And as far as smoothing them up, you can use pretty much whatever you have. I use this little belt sander and then my spindle sander, but you could use uh, all kinds of tools. So that wraps up the bin for today. And once again, this is the top part of a piece of trim in an arch top window and I'm also putting together a video on that entire process so if you'd like to see that just check my channel for the video or click the link at the end of this video or in the description but uh, here is a shot of what it's gonna look like roughly once it's mounted you got the inner part of the trim which is three pieces biscuit jointed together and then the band going around it which stands out from that inner part and this side is what goes against the wall and uh, while this is a piece of trim and I can get away with some of that crudeness, if you were going to be building a piece of furniture, you'd want this bin to be a little nicer. So the main thing to pay attention to is your clamping methods. And um, doing a dry run or either doing a bin before you start your bins that you'll actually use. If it works out, you can end up using it, of course. But um, uh, by practicing before you do the real thing, you can save yourself a lot of time in the end. Um, but uh, I hope this gives you a lot of ideas of uh, what you can do with some of your projects. Maybe dress up a boring looking window in your house. You don't even have to have an arch top window. You could put this over top of a square window, a version of this, and then fill this uh, part here in with something decorative. Um, it could be something painted on the wall or either some sort of a little starburst wood pattern or whatever else you can think of. It's just, uh, um, you know creativity you just <laughs> think of something but uh with all that said i'm having a great time making these videos i really want to thank y'all all for watching and um, i'll see you in the next video if you're new to my videos and would like to become part of the channel click the red subscribe button now and you will get updates on all the future videos that i post glad you found me and thanks for watching